I went to school to be a family nurse practitioner but only lasted six months at my first job at a family practice clinic. Let me break down why family practice was not a great fit for me. Hi friends, my name is Ahmed Mirza. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I am currently practicing in the emergency department and at urgent care. Let's get into the four reasons why I left family medicine. Number one was the schedule. Now as a bedside nurse, we're used to working three 12 hour shifts a week. So going from that and then into family practice where you worked eight to five Monday through Friday, that was a huge shift. Now that means you only had off on the weekends. Everything else that you had to do, grocery shopping, hanging out with friends, going to the mall, getting any kind of errands done meant that everybody else is off and everything is super packed and a lot more difficult. Having days off in the middle of the week means that you can get these errands done without everything being super busy. Just having one or two days off in the week makes a huge world of a difference being able to do other things outside of work. Now working in the emergency department, I work about 12 to 14 shifts a month, and I can usually group my shifts together, uh, which means at least once a month, I can have five to six days off in a row. This allows time for travel, working on other things like YouTube, or just hanging out with family or doing any other side hobby. Before we get any further, please smash that like button. It really helps get this video out to more people just like you. That was one huge factor of the schedule. I just really did not like working five days a week. It just felt like I was working nonstop. And even when you know you work eight to five, yeah, the hours are shorter, eight to nine hours. But as soon as I got home, I felt like I didn't really accomplish anything else. Maybe I went to the gym, but that's about it. You get home, you make dinner, rest a little bit, go to sleep, do it again. Versus when you work in a longer shift, like a 12 hour shift, you spend that whole day working, but then you have a whole day off where you can actually get some other things done. Number two was the salary. Now as a family nurse practitioner in most family practice clinics, you're working on a set salary, meaning you're expected to see an X amount of patients. Usually that's 15 to 25 patients in an eight hour period. And you're not usually making anything more if you work harder or if you see more patients or if you do any extra procedures. Some places might offer you an incentive bonus quarterly or annually, but that's usually not the norm. And in family practice, it's hard to increase your pay unless your contract is up for negotiation and you negotiate a higher salary. You're also working five days a week, which means it's hard to pick up extra work on the side. Uh, you only have the weekends available. So unless you want to work six to seven days a week, it's, you know, it's very difficult. Even telemedicine is very difficult because I have off throughout the week, I can pick up telemedicine or I can pick up a second job at urgent care, or even you can pick up second job in the ER. But when you're working eight to five, Monday through Friday, it makes it very hard to fit anything else in your schedule. In general, a family practice nurse practitioner can expect to make anywhere from eighty to $105,000 a year working full-time 40 hours at a family practice clinic. Now this pay may go up a little bit. You may see a couple percentage increase year to year, but other than that, like I said, it's hard for your pay to go up. So in family practice, I felt like the pay, I didn't have too much control. There wasn't enough flexibility outside of it where I can make more money. Number three is the flexibility. Now being a full-time employee, that probably means that you have very little flexibility in your schedule. You're usually expected to come there at a certain time, leave at a certain time. Sometimes you gotta clock in, clock out. Um, and you're expected to see, you know, whatever patients they put on your schedule. Now, sure, you can take some time off. For example, say you had a doctor's appointment or your child had a doctor's appointment. You have a little bit of flexibility to block your schedule for a couple hours in the morning or in the afternoon to run a quick errand and come back. Sure, you can take that. You can take some days off. In general, you don't really have too much control of your schedule when you're working. However, in most emergency departments, you're expected to work a minimum of 120 hours a month. So, you know, do the math. If you're working 10 hour shifts, that's 12 shifts a month. If you're working 12 hour shifts, that's 10 shifts a month. So it's a lot less time spending at work. Also, if you wanted to pick up more hours, let's say for example, you're working 120 hours a month, you're making 120,000. Say you wanted to increase your salary for a few months, you can pick up extra hours. You can work 140, 160, however much you want. So you have the flexibility of being able to increase the hours you want to work to make more money or decrease it and just do the minimum. Whereas in a family practice, no, you have to stay working, whatever it is, unless you drop down to a part-time status. So I felt like in family medicine, I had you know very little flexibility to upscale or downscale my schedule. Emergency medicine in that case worked out much better. Number four, in family practice, the work does not end when you stop seeing the patients. There's always patient messages, labs, 
x-rays, various things that you have to follow up with on your off time. In practice, I was seeing myself come an hour before work to catch up on these or stay an hour later. And this is besides doing the charting. I mean, wherever you work, you're, you're gonna have the charting. So eventually you get efficient at that. But I felt like in family practice, I was spending a lot of time reviewing things prior to patients coming in and a lot of times reviewing the messages. Since nowadays with the electronic EMR system, uh, there's the patient portal so you could be patients could be sitting at home they have questions they can type it up and respond and the provider can respond which is really nice for patients but unfortunately a lot of times it gets abused and patients want to have a full-blown conversation on there so if you are working in family practice you have to be very good at juggling that you have to know your limit of when to stop doing the messages and asking them to come into the clinic to explain things it was just an extra thing that you had to deal with however in some family practice jobs they'll stipulate in the contract some admin time say you're required to work 40 hours a week but 35 hours in that week you'll be seeing patients five hours you'll have admin time that you can respond to messages, finish up charting, review labs, x-rays, any other administrative tasks that you need to do. This is nice, however, it's not offered in all contracts, but it's nice because you don't have to come in early or leave late to finish these tasks. They include it in your pay, so you're being paid for that time. Versus other clinics, they expect you to work 40 hours and then you just have to use up your own time, unpaid time to finish up these admin tasks. So, you know, I recommend if you are gonna be working in family practice to try to negotiate this admin time in your contract. Four to five hours a week is a good amount of time for admin time that is paid. What I loved about emergency medicine is you clock in, you clock out. There's nothing to review before you go to work. As soon as you clock in, you start seeing the patients, you review their previous history really quickly. You go see the patient, you chart, you know, rinse and repeat until you leave. Once you leave, you give a handoff to the next provider, that's it, you're done. There's no on call, there's nothing to follow up with when you're at home. Uh, when you're at home, you can just rest. Now, some people might not like the shift work, but I felt like emergency medicine was a great way to kind of separate my work life from my personal life. And, you know, once I'm at work, all I do is work, and I'm at home, I don't have to do anything. If you're interested in family medicine, please don't let this video stop you. You know, there are a lot of family medicine practitioners that are thriving in the field, a lot of nurse practitioners that are owning their own clinic, giving them more flexibility in their pay and their hours at the work and kind of managing how they want to run the practice. And a lot of them own multiple clinics that are doing extremely well. If you are very interested in family medicine, then go for it. You know, even taking $80,000 a year, if it's a very nice practice and you're work, you know, you have a very good relationship with other providers, that's a really good learning environment. It may be a great stepping stone for, you know, other future endeavors, whether you want to get into another practice or you want to open up your own practice. Some of these reasons I mentioned you know, are not the end all be all, you know, reasons to be in the profession or not. You have to kind of look at the whole package. Someone may say that, sure, you know, the, I could take these reasons into consideration, but I'm a lot more comfortable and I'm a lot less stressed out working in family medicine versus like an urgent care that's very high strung in the emergency department. And that lower stress makes the world of a difference for them. And I can totally see that. At the end of the day, family and practice is a great field. It wasn't you know the best fit for me at this time but for a lot of people it is check out this video i made about emergency department npa and pa salary or this video about how to be a emergency department nurse practitioner until next time bye